Yo guys, what is up? Max here in our last Epoch video, and today we're going over five of the best starter builds for Cycle 1.0. Um, now, I, fun fact, have been playing Last Epoch on and off for four years now. I picked this game up in 2020, and while I've played it a ton, I've never made guide videos for it, uh, mainly because up until this 1.0, there hasn't been, like, a ton of interest in build guides for this game. Uh, however, with 1.0 coming out, I wanted to share with you guys the builds that I've enjoyed the most, the builds that I've found have been really strong. These are tried and true tested builds. Uh, some of them have had nerfs and buffs over the course of the game's early access, um, but these are builds that are going to be really strong on launch that will carry you uh, up into the end game and through the end game. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's get right into it. So we're going to be doing one build per class, and our starting build is the Hydrahedron Rune Master. Now, out of Sorcerer, Spellblade, and Rune Master Masteries for the Mage, I found the Rune Master to be the strongest. And the build that we're talking about today is Hydrahedron, which uses Runic Invocation as its main damage dealing skill. Now, the Rune Master is a very complicated uh, character. However, this build makes it pretty simple. So Runic Invocation is our main damage dealing skill on this build and Runic Invocation summons a different spell depending on the spells that were cast prior to it. So if you cast a Fire skill, you get a Fire Rune. If you cast a Lightning skill, you get a Lightning Rune, a Cold skill, a Cold Rune. Depending on the order that you have these runes and the orders you cast your skills, when you proc Runic Invocation, you're going to do a different uh, skill. Um, and the skill that we're focusing on this build is called Hydrahedron. That is going to be a lightning fire fire skill. So now you can see on top of my character, I've got lightning fire fire. And then when I cast runic invocation, I'm going to cast hydrahedron. This is this like flame turret. It shoots out in all directions and it does a ton of damage as well as being an auto targeting skill. So it'll just chase enemies uh, and the damage will hit enemies for us. Now the synergies that we're using with this is one, we're using Flame Rush. Flame Rush is a movement skill. It's going to turn us into a ball of fire that does an explosion. And whenever we cast Flame Rush, we're using Epilogue, which casts Runic Invocation for us. So now, when we have all of our runes, instead of actually having to click Runic Invocation, we just dash into a fireball. And then whenever we land, we're going to cast Hydrahedron on, on cast. This allows us to constantly keep up our movement because we're going to be dashing, casting this ability all the time. And Flame Rush is also going to be shredding enemies' uh, fire resistances. And we're also going to be getting tons of ward. Uh, we're going to be consuming all of our ignites to get ward. We're getting less damage taken. We're getting ward. We're getting mana. Um, and we're able to use this as a movement skill that's going to be constantly proccing flame turrets. The next synergy that we've got on this build is Frost Wall. Frost Wall, we're actually going to be converting to a fire skill and we're placing it down on the ground. Now, when we pass through Frost Wall, we're going to get proc our flame ward. Flame Ward is going to give us tons of ward. It's going to activate a fire aura around us that's going to do damage around us. Uh, we're going to get tons of mana regen whenever we have Flame Ward. We're going to take less damage. We're going to take less elemental damage. And while we have Flame Ward active, we're going to have 150% increased fire damage. Now, normally, if we use Flame Ward, it's got a cooldown. We've got to wait 10 seconds to cast this skill again, uh, and it's only active for three seconds, so this is pretty big downtime. However, if we're using Frost Wall, um, a little awkward that it cast there, but whenever we pass through Frost Wall, we're now going to be getting Flame Ward, and this actually works when we dash through it. Um, so now we've got Frost Wall, which has zero cooldown. We're going to be constantly dashing through it. This is going to constantly give us our Flame Ward, which is going to give us tons of survivability. It's also going to give us tons of increased fire damage, and the build, how it plays, is you're constantly just putting down flame uh, firewalls, which will burn enemies, and then when you pass through them, you're going to get Ward per Ignite. You're going to cast Hydrahedon constantly, and the last thing that we're using on the build is Rune Bolts. Rune Bolts, we're going to be casting that auto target, um, and every time that we're firing them, we're going to be casting extra projectiles. All of these hits are going to give us mana back, and we're also going to be stacking up Rune Weave. Rune Weave is going to give us elemental damage uh, per stack of armor shred that we're doing, and it's going to give us increased crit chance when we're passing through it, um, and we're going to be making this a guaranteed shock skill meaning that every time that we cast it, we're going to be getting a lightning rune. However, as you can see, when I'm casting it, I'm also getting fire runes. Uh, and the reason for that is 
Uh, last thing, in the Runic Invocation, we're getting Immutable Order. This allows me, no matter what skills I cast, they're going to get runes based on the order of the skills that I have on my bar. So Rune Bolt is a Lightning skill, Frost Wall is a Fire skill, and Runic Invocation is also, the way that we're using it, is going to be a Fire skill. Um, which means that no matter what order you cast your abilities, no matter what you click, you will always do Hydrahedron after you cast Flame Rush. Uh, this makes the build, basically, you can't mess up. You're constantly doing tons of AoE, tons of damage, uh, and it is one of the strongest and most synergistic builds that I've played. Uh, and that is just the one that we're starting off with. The next class that we're going to be talking about is the Primalist. Uh, now, the Primalist has got three masteries, Beast Master, Druid, and Shaman. Of those, I do recommend Druid. Uh, it's been my personal favorite, and there's a lot of builds that you can go as a Druid. There's the Cold Dot Werebear, Lightning Werebear, Lightning Bug, um, uh, Thorn Totems build. There's lots of great options. My favorite, personally, has been the Swarm Blade Lightning Bug build. This build has a lot of complex synergies but it all starts in the swarm blade form now with this build you're going to transform into a bug your mana bar is going to get replaced by rage uh, you will constantly be regening rage while in this and every time you kill an enemy you're going to be getting rage back with the way that we spec this but while you're a bug your hot bar changes so you can't use your normal skills however what's so cool about this build is the actions that you use while you're a bug will trigger your other skills so for example your basic attack does the serpent strike tree so now anytime i click arm blade slash i'm actually casting serpent strike and then all of my skills in serpent strike are going to apply here which will go over whenever i hit enemies six times i'm going to proc tornado so uh, this is at six stacks i cast tornado this is going to decrease it uh, so now i only need to proc or i need to melee attack an enemy four times and i will proc a tornado um and then here whenever i use my dash ability i'm going to proc maelstrom maelstrom tornado and serpent strike are all very core abilities to this build uh, so let's go over how they work now tornado is going to be our main damage dealer remember that anytime that we basic attack an enemy we're going to be procking tornado tornado we're going to be actually scaling lightning we're not scaling the damage that tornado does we're scaling the lightning that it's going to be casting um as you can see our lightning is right now at 10,000 damage per second um and tornado is going to cast lightning at nearby enemies every two seconds uh and then with this node we're going to get it 140 percent more frequently uh we're also going to be getting uh more attack and cast speed while we've got tornado we've got tornadoes lasting longer our damage multipliers will increase the damage that lightnings will have uh, we're going to be able to proc more tornadoes eye of the storm is going to proc tornadoes on us uh, and what's so great about having tornadoes on us is that tornadoes actually pull in enemies so with this build you're going to be constantly basic attacking enemies and you're going to be spawning tornadoes those tornadoes will pull in enemies and as you basic attack on more on them you're going to spawn more tornadoes which will proc more lightning storms lightning is a spell you can see that's a lightning spell so with our equipment we're going to be scaling lightning spell damage uh which we can use uh colnavar's claim is a really easy legendary to get that'll give us a ton of damage when we dash around we're going to be proccing maelstrom maelstrom also while we have six or more stacks uh we're going to be proccing lightning so we've got even more lightning coming down it's the same lightning so now we've got tons and tons of lightning uh, we're also going to be able to do a lot of stunning on this build. When we get stacks of Maelstrom, we're going to get dodge uh, per Maelstrom stack. This build gets up to like 88% dodge chance so that enemies just aren't hitting you, which allows us to get pretty tanky. We're going to get stacks of haste and frenzy for more movement speed. But this is all from our dodge ability. So as we dodge around... Uh, I hit the wrong button. A little rusty. But as we dodge around and fight enemies, we're going to be just getting... Uh, these maelstrom stacks so now you can see that i have nine now that you um as i like basically cast and dash on enemies there i've got 12 stacks and as you can see as i'm basic attacking and dashing around uh, if i was hitting an enemy our dodge chance would just keep going up and up 
Uh, it's very, very nice, and we've basically got unlimited rage. Uh, lastly, Serpent Strike, we're going to make it a lunge ability. So now our basic attack will lunge us towards enemies. We've got an insta-kill threshold on it. Uh, we're going to be shredding armor, and you're basically increasing your attack speed to decrease the defenses of enemies, shred 100% of their armor, dash around, uh, and proc and debuff for your lightning damage. And then lastly, we've got a Spriggan, uh, which is going to give us a ton of healing. It's going to give us increased dodge rate, increased base crit, tons of crit avoidance, uh, and you're going to have a little companion running around alongside you at all times. Uh, and that is the Druid build. It plays like a melee build, but it's actually a spell lightning build, constantly summoning tornadoes. It's really cool looking. It's got really decent solid uh, survivability not the best of these builds uh, and it's got really nice damage uh, definitely recommend if you're looking for a like cool lightning druid build our next class is the acolyte class now acolyte has the necromancer mastery lich mastery and on launch there will be warlock i'm not going to be talking about warlock in this video because i haven't played it yet because it's not out uh, and these are all tried and true tested builds uh, i will be posting an experimental theory craft leveling warlock guide uh, but that won't be in this video now between lich and necromancer you really can't go wrong uh, i played a death seal poison lich for my first build and it was so much fun but for this video i'm going to be recommending the summon flame wraith necromancer now if you played diablo 4 and didn't like the summons in this in that game you might love the summons in path of uh last epoch uh because they are incredibly strong now uh summon wraith is a skill that's going to summon these minions uh the catch with summon wraith is that they actually fade very quickly. So you summon them, and then their health actually drains rapidly. Uh, and so with this build, we're going to want to be able to summon these guys and also keep them up. But because they go away, they are very expendable. And that's part of what we're doing with this build. So with our summon wraiths, we're going to want to give them um, a bunch of uh, cast speed so that we can summon a ton of them very quickly. Uh, it's going to allow us to spam them. We're going to want flame rates so that we can summon uh, these fire rates. And then we're going to be scaling tons of crit chance on them. Uh, and also, they're going to be, my camera's kind of blocking it, but we're going to give them a ton of crit chance and they're going to be able to leech their crit damage as health. They're going to get 6% leech as health. We're going to grab this skill, which is going to give them a 90% crit damage multiplier. We're also going to give them uh, plus 60% necrotic damage uh, and added necrotic damage. And then we're also going to give them necrotic health leech. Um, and what this allows them to do uh, is we're also going to be grabbing them, giving them more health, is these minions, when we summon them, will actually be leeching their health off of the damage that they're dealing. We're going to give them a ton of cast speed and crit chance and damage uh, and more necrotic damage so that even though that their health bar is going down, they're going to be able to uh, stay up for fairly often. Um, the next thing that's gonna happen is these guys, when they die with summon volatile zombie, every time that any of our minions die, we have a 30% chance for us to cast these fire zombies. These fire zombies will run around and do these big explosions. We're gonna scale the damage that their explosions do against rares and bosses by 60%. Uh, we're going to uh, give them a flame vomit so that they can light enemies on fire um, and give them tons of more damage and move speed. Um, and then on top of that, now we've got a bunch of minions that are constantly happening. Now we're actually going to be working on damaging the minions. Um, and we're going to be doing that with Drain Leif and Dread Shade. Um, now this is very interesting. So Dread Shade is going to give us even more drain on our minions life, but we're going to be adding base necrotic damage to them. Remember that they leech necrotic damage as health. Uh, and we're going to give them 50% increased necrotic damage. So how this works is when these wraiths are summoned, you can use Dread Shade on one. That's going to give them an, an area or an AoE that buffs all of them, and only one of them is actually going to have the drain on them. With this, we're going to give it a bigger area. We're going to give them um, added more necrotic damage. So now our wraiths have more necrotic damage, which once again, they're leeching. We're going to give them frenzy. We're going to give them tons of armor. Uh, we're going to give them increased more attack and cast speed while they have this. Uh, we're going to give bigger AoE. We're going to give ourselves affected by the aura so that we are going to be having more necrotic damage. Um, and we're going to be draining some of our life as well. Um, and then we're also going to be using drain life. Now, drain life is where things get even crazier. Um, so with drain life, this is what's going to make us basically unkillable. 
when we're draining life, we're going to get stacks of contempt. This is going to give us tons of armor per stack and resistances. This is going to give us 50% increased armor and 50% to all of our resistances. You'll see on this build uh, that I don't have my resistances maxed out. Uh, I'm going to summon some minions real quick, and then I'm going to drain on them. And you will see all of my resistances go to 75%. If you don't like having to hit resistance caps on builds, uh, this is the build for you because you don't have to worry about resistance caps because you're going to get 50% all the time on all of your resistances. Um, the next thing with Drain Life is going to um, do is we're going to want to get the ability for Hecatomb. Drain Life can now target our minions. Up until you get this, this will be casted on enemies. Once we do this, we can drain it from our minions. The reason this is important uh, is because we're going to spawn a bunch of minions. And then with Dark Shackles, uh, we're going to be able to make it a casted skill instead of a channeled skill. Um, the reason for this is up until you get that, um, whenever you want to drain this, you're going to have to constantly stay in place and hold it on your minions versus now we just click it and we can walk around and it's going to drain the life of our minions. Um, and the next thing that that's going to do uh, is we're going to get tons of extra targets that we can drain from. Uh, and more importantly, we are going to uh, get with Hecatomb we're going to get 10 mana gained per second. The way this all plays out, as you're seeing from the gameplay, is you just walk around constantly siphoning life from all of your minions, which is giving you a uh, constant like lifesteal and also constant mana. Uh, and then all of your minions are going to be attacking everything in front of you, doing tons of damage. And when they're doing damage, they're life stealing. Uh, and you just walk around constantly draining life and constantly draining mana. And because you've got all this mana, you can constantly summon as many of your wraiths as possible. And while all of your wraiths are attacking, when they're dying, they're summoned zombies. And when we're uh, when, with our uh, skill tree and things like that, when things die, we're going to get a ton of buffs. Um, and also, we're going to get Aegis Fall. This skill is crazy. Um, our minions will have up to 200% armor shred, so they're constantly just ripping all the defenses off of enemies. Uh, and then we can also get increased armor per minion and health regen per minion. Uh, so this build is very, very tanky. It does tons of damage, uh, and it's got some crazy synergies. If you've ever had wanted to play like a minion fantasy build, uh, this has powerful minions that you're also going to be damaging them, but while you're damaging them, you're buffing them in a true like necromancer fashion. It's just awesome. Our next class is the Sentinel, which has the masteries of Forge Guard, Paladin, and Void Knight. Now I'm gonna be recommending Void Knight uh, because Paladin and Forge Guard are both very cool, uh, but Void Knight is my favorite. It's really strong and it's also the most unique or one of the most unique classes in Last Epoch. Um, a lot of other ARPGs have fantasies that are similar to like a Holy Paladin or the Forge Guard. Uh, void Knight is this like time rot void knight that does like spell damage or a melee damage. Uh, it's so, so cool. It has the Devouring Orb Auto Bomber build that's very clean for mapping. Uh, it's got a Racing Strike builds that do tons of single target damage. However, the build that we're going to be talking about is the Echoing Warpath build. Now, Warpath, you can start using from level four. Um, on this build, you've got basically no mana cost on it, so you can go through an entire map. And with the Echoing Warpath, we're able to create clones of ourselves that will help uh, us do more single target damage uh, and spin in place for us. With the Apocalypse Whirl, we're going to convert Warpath into a Void skill and give it Time Rot chance. Uh, we do scale some dot damage on this build, which is pretty cool. Um, and we're going to be able to increase the movement speed and the damage that we're dealing. Uh, and all of these things, the uh, Reckless Spin will reduce the channel cost. Uh, and we're going to be able to uh, generate mana with it so that you can spin forever and spin through a whole map. Um, we're also going to be using the Sigils of Hope skill. Now, this is an interesting one because in order to get Sigils of Hope, you have to put 15 points into Paladin. However, this is going to give us a ton of increased void damage. It's 40% increased void damage per sigil. Uh, and we've currently got three sigils. We're going to be able to get four uh, for 120% increased void damage, which is fantastic. Um, 
So, and we're also going to get the ability to have a chance to summon sigils on kill. And so when what we do, because these cost a lot of sigils, is we summon the sigils, you'll see my mana go down. Then we volatile reversal. This is going to give us a ton of buffs and also restore all of our mana. Now I've got these sigils, which is going to give me tons of increased damage. And that volatile reversal skill that you just saw sends me back in time. When we do this, we're going to get tons of attack speed in this game. Your attack speed does increase your uh your like warpath so now whenever we do that we're gonna get more like spins with warpath and we're also gonna be grabbing food for the worms now as you saw i have a chance to inflict time rot with our warpath and food for the worms after casting volatile reversal you gain a buff that causes you to deal more void damage multiplicative with other modifiers per stack of time rot on the target the duration of this buff is equal to the length of time you've traveled back um, so we're going to be getting lots of, uh, time rot. We've got intercept void rift, uh, to create void rifts, which will time rot. Um, and we're going to be scaling our increased damage based on the amount of time rot. So we're dealing a lot of, uh, time rot dot damage, but we're also scaling the damage of warpath off of the amount of time rot that we're doing. Uh, anomaly is also going to give us a massive buff. Uh, with the Time Lord, we're going to be able to cast Anomaly on us. This is a skill that sends enemies forward in time. Uh, however, with the way that we've set this up on this build, that the Maxwell version uh, will link as well, uh, we're able to shred Void Resistance while it's on us. Um, and we're also able to in do more Time Rot things. We've got when enemies return to the present, they take increased Void damage. Uh, this is constantly going to be sending enemies forward and backwards in time. So when we cast this bubble on ourselves, we're going to be shredding void resistance with this. We're going to be making enemies take more void damage. Uh, and we're going to be able to keep this up basically on ourselves at all times. Um, and it's also going to give us a little bit more survivability. 60% increased crit chance while we're in it. It's just a massive buff. Uh, and so you're going to be spinning looking like this. It just looks so cool. Uh, the single target on this build isn't as good as uh, some of the other builds on this list, but it's like more than fine it'll get you through all the content uh, and it's just such a smooth build to play you've got tons of void damage tons of dot and uh, you're constantly on the move hitting things which makes the build feel great next up we've got the rogue class where we've got the blade dancer mastery the marksman mastery and falconer once again not going to be talking about falconer because it's going to be experimental these are tried and true tested builds now marksman's got some cool builds with multi-shot uh with detonating arrow however blade dancer is just incredibly strong uh blade dancer is the strongest mastery that i've played in terms of damage it fills that assassin role of that like super high bursty damage uh and it's got some pretty decent survivability this isn't going to be as survivable as something like our uh, rune master build that i showed at the beginning of this but this is the highest dps build that i personally have played uh, and that has to do with umbral blades and synchronized strike now umbral blades is a big core of this build um, and the big thing, the big skill to get is called Umbral Remnant. Whenever one of your shadows expire, they now also leave behind an Umbral Blade. And when we pair our shadows, drop Umbral Blades with Lethal Darkness, Umbral Blades also inflict a stack of shadow daggers on hit while using a dagger. Um, this allows us to, uh, whenever we're proccing Umbral Blades, proc Shadow Daggers. Now, Shadow Daggers is not a skill that you can spec into here there's just a lot of skills that proc shadow daggers and as you probably saw from that tooltip shadow daggers do a lot of damage upon reaching of four stacks of shadow daggers the daggers plunge in the target dealing physical damage this damage always critical strikes so it is guaranteed critical strike it does ridiculous amounts of damage and you can scale scale tons of crit multiplier with it um so now you saw that are Umbral Blades, whenever these are hitting enemies, they're going to proc stacks of Shadow Daggers. Now, with Umbral Blades, we're going to go Sword Thrower to give it 250% increased damage and 100% radius on these big Umbral Blades. With Cacophony of Steel, the blade will create a Blade Storm that hovers in place. Um, and with Steel Torrent, those Blade Storms are going to have a way larger area. And with Loathing, those Blade Storms are going to seek out enemies. So now what we've got here is we've got Umbral Blades that are going to proc Shadow Daggers, and these things spin in place, but they'll seek out enemies. However, the key here uh, that I said is that these Umbral Blades proc from Shadows. 
And now our big focus is going to be proccing as many shadows as possible. So when you see me click the synchronized strike button, now I'm creating four shadows. When these shadows expire, they're going to proc umbral blades. And that is basically how we're going to operate this build. You're constantly dashing, synchronized striking, uh, which is going to send out chakrams and umbral blades. And then you dash and then synchronize strike and just keep moving and everything will die to all of the explosions of umbral blades. So when we come over uh, to the synchronized strike skill, now we can get shadows created, do 200% increased damage. We get plus two shadows. Uh, we're going to get tons of bleed chance and duration from whenever we use this skill, which is going to be all the time. Get it a little bit more mana efficient. We're going to make it shred armor uh, from enemies and synchronized strike also inflicts enemies with shadow daggers. So we're initially going to proc shadow daggers, dealing tons of damage, and the shadows are going to leave behind umbral blades, which do tons of shadow daggers. We're pairing that with smoke bomb, which is going to shred even more armor. For all of our physical resistance even more armor shred with that uh it's going to give us increased dodge rating which is going to work out very well and when we're in a cloud we're going to be procking guess it more shadows so now we've got tons of shadows every time that we proc this as you can see all of these shadows are procking and all of these shadows will turn into umbral blades and you'll see these things turn into umbral blades way faster on enemies it's not like delayed like that um and then shift uh, which is our movement skill, is going to have a kill threshold. We're going to be able to bleed with it. Uh, we're going to create more shadows. Every time that we shift, we're going to make shadows for even more Umbral Blades, so you're going to be flying past enemies. Um, elusive with this, you have additional dodge chance per point of dex uh, for one second after shifting. This is going to give us up to 75% um, when I like fully proc our things. Um, I get to about 73% dodge rating, so... Very hard to get hit with this build when you're constantly dodging around. Uh, and that is kind of the build. You just teleport around doing incredibly, uh, incredible amounts of damage while also staying mobile. And you've got decent survivability. Uh, but the burst damage is really the king on this build. Uh, you just dash around dealing tons and tons of burst. Things die basically instantly uh and uh the last thing i didn't mention is that we're using shurikens turning them into chakrams uh which will do even more bleed for us uh increase crit chance they're gonna shred uh things for enemies and every time that we shift we're gonna be sending out uh chakrams and the shadows will be sending out chakrams as well for just like even more craziness guys that is gonna do it for the video i hope you enjoyed uh i freaking love last epoch there's so many cool things that you can do with builds and these highlighted some of my favorite builds in the game uh, and i know this was a longer video but i really wanted to like talk about the synergies uh and how these builds actually work because the interskill synergies uh coming together is really what make last epoch the arpg that it is uh there's so many cool things that you can do with these skills skill trees uh, and i wanted to break down that for each of the builds that we highlighted i will catch y'all in the next one guys take care peace